this morning. And um, look at Proverbs chapter 13, please. The, the book of Proverbs chapter number 13. And I'm going to read a verse, very, very, uh, pretty well-known verse, scripture, if you know much about the Bible, and use it in a different way than I maybe have before. Um, Proverbs chapter 13, and we'll look at uh, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 15. That verse says, good understanding gives favor. But the way of transgressors is hard. Look at the next verse. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Look at verse 17. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. Now, we'll stop there, but you can just go over and over and over and over. Them Proverbs are saying, there's two lives you can live. One of them will be blessed, and the other will get you in more trouble than you can ever get out of. That's basically what it's saying. And proverb, those Proverbs are wise sayings. And if you're smart, you'll listen to them. And if you're dumb, you won't. And you'll find out one way, the easy way or the hard way, it's up to you, we, uh, that God was right all along. So I want to use that this morning, and I want to preach on um, a life of sin. A life of sin. Many people today think it's cool, or it's trendy, or it's hot right now to live a life of sin. Many of them. You'll see some this evening in the video uh, that I'll be showing that, that they think, hey, I'm in Hollywood, I'm young, I got money, I'm going to live it up, I'm just going to sin all I can. And then you got people up right here in Burke County who are saying, I don't have a lot of money, I'm not in Hollywood, but I got enough to sin with, and, and they're going to live in sin. One man said uh, one time, there's a, there's a guy in the, in the drunk laying in the ditch, and uh, he's down there drinking that cheap wine, $3, $4 bottle of wine, and then there's an old, rich old hag in Hollywood, 90 years old, that used to be popular and stays drunk in a Hollywood mansion. And she hires people to wait on her hand and foot and she turns on the TV and sees the young pretty girls coming up now and she hates everything and everybody and hates it and laying there dying drunk, but she's got millions of dollars and she can afford $500 bottles of, of champagne. And he said, the only difference between that drunk and her is money. She's got more money to sin with. But there's no difference. So I said, see that guy down there? He's gone to the dogs. See that old woman up there? She's gone to the devil. Same thing. They're all going to wind up at the same place one day. So I want to talk about this morning a life of sin. Are you listening? Number one, a life of sin is a life of bitterness. It's a life of of bitterness. The Bible said that sin is bitter. It's cool and fun to begin with, but then it becomes bitter. It's like something tastes real good in your mouth, and then when it gets down here, man, you start, ah, oh, Lord have mercy, you, uh, you're all to peace. It's bitter in your stomach. That's what sin is like. A man thinks sin is sweet, but it turns bitter and never really satisfies you. The Bible said in Proverbs, uh, Isaiah 24 and verse 9, strong drink, talking about alcohol, is, is bitter, so it'll be bitter to them that drink it. You drink alcohol, it might taste good and feel good to start with, but it'll wind up making you bitter and being bitter in you. The Bible said in Romans 3 and verse 14, their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. The Bible said when Peter got all messed up and got out of the will of God, he went out and wept bitterly. You know what sin will do? It will wind you up a bitter person, hating everything, hating everybody, even hating yourself, and sometimes even hating God. I talk to people a lot of times and say, why don't you go to church? I don't want to hear nothing about God. Don't talk to me about that. I said, my goodness, what's wrong with you? Well, this happened and that happened and, and, and my, my family blew up and I got a divorce and you know, my kid got on drugs and blah, blah, blah. I, why, I don't want to hear about God. Listen, don't, don't start blaming all that junk on God. 
He didn't have nothing to do with that. Won't you blame the devil? He's the one that caused it. And, and the, Lord, the Lord would help you if you'd let him. He'd bless you if you'd let him. But sin will lead you into bitterness. They said years ago, uh, a man got on a bus up north, and he had $1,900 cash on him. Wasn't well, just a little bit to a friendly man came and sat down beside him. It uh, wasn't long after that to another friendly man came, sat down on the other side of him. And they talked and drank a while, and by the time he got off, his friendly friends were gone, and his money was gone. That's just a little picture of how sin does you. Sin is like bait. A man put, takes a hook, and he puts bait. Uh, a worm or something attractive on, on the hook and puts it down the water. These stupid fish come f- swimming by there. And what does a fish do? You know, fish ain't very smart. You know that, right? That's why they call them, you know, fish brain. Fish. They're really, really, really dumb. I mean, fish have no sense. And, uh, uh, they, and they're, they're swimming around through there, and the fish swim there like that, and he sees that bait. He says, that's what I want. That's what I want right there. You say, well, you're comparing me to a fish. Yep, yep. We're just like that sometimes. Matter of fact, dumber. Huh? You, heard about the, you heard about the blonde. The guy took his blonde girlfriend fishing, and, uh, and they were sitting there, and the guy said, now watch this. And he, here come a fish like that, and he said, mind control, mind control, mind control. And that fish just come over and got on his hook, and he pulled it in. She was sitting over, couldn't even get a bite. She said, how'd you do that? He said, my brain is superior to the fish brain. Here comes another one. Mind control, mind control, mind control. Bit his hook and he pulled it in. She said, how do you do that? He said, my, I think positive thoughts. My brain is superior to the fish brain. She said, I'll try it. Here come a fish so much. She went, mind control, mind control, mind control. Mm-hmm. For you that are too dumb to get that, we've got to move on right now. Uh, the fish brain was superior over hers. And, and that's what happened. That's what happens sometimes, y'all. That's what happened. We are just as dumb or worse than fish. We don't like to be told that, but it's the truth. Let me tell you, you know what that is? That's you going out here and say, man, we're going to a party Friday night and we're going to get drunk. You're the dumb fish. The devil's got the hook, the bait, and the hook hid inside it. Am I right? Is that right? Yes, sir. You know that's right, y'all. I mean, you got to tell you, say, oh, my goodness, look at her. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's the bait, buddy. She's the bait. Uh, the devil's got the hook in there. Wow, look at him. He's got, now well, he's the bait, you the fish. Uh, the way of sin is the way of bitterness. It'll make you a bitter old woman. It'll make you a bitter old man. It'll cause bitterness in your life. As a matter of fact, somebody put it like this. They said, man, uh, you know, they don't, don't talk about sin no more. They, uh, everything on TV, everything in, in uh, all the problems of society, it's not sin. There's no such thing as sin out there in the world. So they got to blame it on something, put you on medicine. Uh, but they say, sin never does what it promises. Sin always leaves you worse off than it found you. You're never better off by sinning. Nobody's life is made better by sinning. That, that worm may taste good at, at start with, but after that hook gets in you, it, it, it don't taste good after that. You're hooked. Sin always leaves you worse off. That's like saying, I wrecked my car, and it sure does look better. No, it don't. Uh, every time you wreck your car, it's going to look worse. Every time you smash that mirror, it's going to look worse. That's the way sin is. Sin will ruin your life. You see, man calls it uh, uh, a defect. God calls it a disease. Man calls it a chance. God calls it choice. Man calls it an error. God calls it your enemy. Man calls it a fascination. God calls it fatality. Man calls it infirmity. Can't help it, I'm weak. God calls it iniquity. Yes, you can. Man calls it a, a luxury. God calls it leprosy. Man calls it a liability. God calls it lawlessness. Man calls it trifle. God calls it treachery and tragedy. Man calls it a mistake. God calls it a madness. Man calls it weakness. God calls it willfulness. You see, sin is packaged in a little package that looks attractive, and when you take the bait, then it's too late, it gets inside you. A life of sin is a life of bitterness. 
My, at the people I've talked to, y'all. At the people I've talked to. Lord, have mercy, y'all. At the people we've talked to. Over and over and over and over. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I was up there at the hospital in uh, Asheville. Uh, not too long ago, I told you, girl in there in her 30s. She's laying in the bed like this, and her leg was just busted from here to here. Looked like somebody just busted open a watermelon. I mean, they tried to patch it up and fix it up. And I said, what in the world is wrong with you? And you know, they stick them needles in her arm. You can't find a vein. After a while, you can't find nowhere to stick one. And so they start putting them in their legs, then their knees, between their toes, and everything else just hunting a vein. You know what that is? That's the result of sin. That is the result of sin. Are you listening to me this morning? It, it kills you. It's bitter. It'll make you bitter. It'll get to where you say, well, I hate everything and I hate everybody. That's what sin will do. You know, the sweetest thing in this world is an older person that's lived for the Lord all their life and in their, in their sunset years with a smile on their face, happy, praising God, ready to go on to the next world. The saddest thing in the world is a bitter older person that's lived their life in sin and messed around and messed around and wasted their life on things that don't matter. Sin will get you in trouble. I, I just read this week, just this week, a 13-year-old boy, 13 years old, uh, found out that his girlfriend, the girl he liked, had broke up with him and liked another boy, goes out at the steps at his house and hangs himself with a bed sheet. His dad came in and seen that kid hanging there. He sort of said, he's come in and saw him out of the corner of his eye, didn't realize how bad it was, then he realized his son had hung himself. That's the result of sin. Something was bad wrong in a situation like that. When you're 13 years old and hang yourself over a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you have an unnatural affection for a person when you think that person you live or die, there ain't nobody worth hanging yourself for. I mean, there ain't, ain't nobody worth cutting yourself for. Tell you the truth, <laughs> there ain't nothing I'm worth fooling with most of the time uh, if you want to get honest about it. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, uh, that 16-year-old boy, I just read this week, axed with an axe, Asked his grandmother and mother and baby brothers and sisters to death and then jumped off a cell phone tower and killed himself, 16 years old. They said that he was mad and jealous because his mom was paying the babies more attention than she was paying them. That's weird. That's a weird thing, man. I, that's where I don't remember who my mom paid attention to when I was growing up. I didn't care. I, I, I mean, I, that's a weird, messed up situation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living a day of sin. In San Francisco, they say there's 60 cars a day get smashed. Just somebody comes up, takes a big rock, smashes it into them, grabs a purse, grabs whatever in them, takes off. That's what happens when sin is rampant in a city. It's out of control. There's place, I, when I was out in California a few years ago, they said there's police out there and they're stealing cars. The thing is, you steal cars. And you can leave your car there and come back and it'd be gone. And these gangs were just taking them. And this guy thought he'd be real smart one day and he chained, parked between two trees, chained the front bumper to one tree and he chained the back bumper to another tree. And put a load on there. Leave my car alone. He come back that evening. Both chains was cut. The car was turned around backwards. And a note on it said, if we want it, we'll get it. That's some bad crooks right there, buddy. You, we need them to bus ministry. Uh, they could get something done, somebody like that. But I'm telling you this morning, people, sin is ruining this world. Sin is to blame. You know why there's homeless people all over Los Angeles and San Francisco? Sin. It's not, it's not mental illness. It's sin. It's not, you know why the towers were hit? Sin. You know why there's divorce? Sin. You know why people can't get along, fuss and fight? Sin. Sin is to blame. Sin is to blame. A sinful life will get you in more trouble than you'll ever get out of. You want me, you want me to just cut this short this morning and say a couple things to you? Listen carefully. Don't live your life in sin. 
You are making the biggest mistake you'll ever have. A sinful life is a life of bitterness. I'll tell you something else. A sinful life, a sinful life is a life of slavery. A sinful life is a life of slavery. We all see it everywhere we go. Drugs, I see them all, every time I pull off of you. Exit 103, exit 105, almost every day there's somebody standing there with a sign and, and basically what that sign should say is, I'm a slave, I'm a slave. I lost my job, I lost my kids, DSS got my family, I lost my husband, I lost my wife, I am a slave to drugs. That's what sin will do to you. You kids better think about that before you mess with that stuff. You better think about it. You know, I preach these kids all the time, and I said, don't take nothing. Don't put no drugs in your body. Don't take no pills. Don't smoke nothing that you don't have. Listen, you're better off to hurt a little bit than to take a bunk and become a drug addict. That's right. I'm telling you, pain's part of life. Get used to it. Amen. I'd rather hurt a little bit than become a drug addict. I'm dependent on that stuff. And they say the first time some of that stuff, like meth and, and some of that crazy drugs they do now, the first time they enter into your body, you become addicted, and it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. Legal drugs are about the biggest enemy we have now. We got people sitting in churches all over this country that... Come a while, not a while. Come a while, not a while. It's because they're messed up on pills. And they think nobody don't know it. It's easy to see. Easy to see. I want to say thirdly, a sinful life is a life of regret. A sinful life is a life of of regret. Have you ever done something? That's a, that's a dumb question, ain't it? All us adults have. Have you ever done something and really, really, really regretted it? Like, oh, what in the world? Why in the world did I do that? How many of you ever felt like that? Raise your hand. I have, buddy. Many times. If you live long enough, you will too. I mean, there's been some time you think, what in the world was I thinking? Have I, have I lost my mind? Have I gone crazy? Why in the world did I do something that stupid? And guess what? You can't go back and undo it. God's got this fixed so that once you do something, see, like I hit my hand on that right now, I can't change that. That's on my record. What you did yesterday, it's on your record. You'll either reap good or bad. What you done last night, Friday night, it's all weighing out in your final report. One day when you stand before God, there is case after case after case in the Bible and out of the Bible of people who said, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Look, people, all you've got to do is look at Hollywood. Look at, I mean... Look what happened to Elvis. Look what happened to Anna Nicole. Look what happened to John Lennon. Look what happened to Heath Ledger. Look what's going to happen to Paris Hilton, Britney Spears. All these. I told them when, when uh, Britney Spears was young, and I had Christian people tell me, they said, it's so wonderful that we can have a good role model for our girl. I said, yeah, you wait and see. Wait. I mean, uh, you want your girl bald-headed? I, 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 listen, I didn't, I didn't know role model. And when Miley Cyrus, little Hannah Montana come up, they said, now there's a good one. And I said, you watch. My, mark my words, she'll go down the same road, and Lord, she's more perverted than, than, than Brittany is. Her backslid old daddy, all they wants money, and sold that girl to the devil. Now, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you, you mark my words, these other, Selena Gomez, uh, the, the Beeb, oh, every one of them, they're going down the same road. The devil don't play. Sin ain't no joke. It'll mess your life up, and it'll get you too. You sit there and think, He's just an old country, crazy. I'm country, but I ain't crazy. Oh, he's an old hillbilly that don't know what he's talking about. I'm a hillbilly that does know what he's talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I am right, buddy. This book said, be sure your sin will find you out. I heard a story of a young man. He, mom, let me think of it, doing a thing on concert this evening. His boy's about 16 or 17, wanted to go to a concert really bad, and his mom wouldn't let him. And he said, I'm going. And she said, no, you're not. 
You ain't getting the car. Nobody's coming to get you. You get in your room. You ain't going. And he got so filled with rage like a lot of young people do. And the devil, like a demon, got in him. And he went and he laid down on his bed and put his headphones in. And see, demon spirits come through them music, that music. Sure does. Just like the Holy Spirit. Did you feel the Holy Spirit come in here when we were singing up here a while ago? The Holy Spirit comes through that music. Demon spirits come through that other music. And he laid down. He said, and like the devil got him, the devil got him. And he said, uh, just, just go kill her, just go kill her. He's under the influence of that demonic power, running the bedroom, went under his daddy's, pulled the drawer, a sock drawer out, grabbed his daddy's pistol, and went in the living room like that, and put it to his mother's head and killed his mother like that. And then he, uh, then, uh, he flipped out, and everybody started crying, and the cops come and got him, and they put him downtown. He wasn't like 17, and put him in them little rooms. And they put him on them little rooms, you know, just been a couple of hours. And them detectives sat down and said, all right, you're going to confess? You're going to confess? He said, yeah, I did it. I did it. And they, they said, why did you do it? He said, I don't, I don't know. Something just came up. I didn't, I didn't mean to. And they called a preacher, and the preacher was coming down the hall, and they said he could hear that boy in that room screaming. And he's in there screaming, saying, Mom, I didn't mean to. Mama, I, I didn't, it was a mistake. Can't we go back? Can't we just go back? Can't we just go back? No, you can't. done it's done Charles Manson's done gone he can't come back and live that life again Jimi Hendrix gone Janis Joplin gone Elvis gone it's a life of regret it's a life of regret you listening you can't go back you can tie a knot in time that you can't undo in eternity, people. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm about through. God won't stop you from sinning. He won't. You can, you can go out here today and do whatever you want to. you got a free choice. It's your, it's your business. God ain't going to stop you from sinning, but you ain't going to stop him from knocking your brains out one of these days. That's right. That's right. You better, he's a, he's a, he's, it's a fearful thing falling in the hands of the living God. Our God is a consuming fire. You said, I thought he's a God of love. He is. He loved you enough to let his son die for you. But if you stub up on him, he's also a God of wrath. And he does allow you to reap what you sow. Are you listening? God won't stop you from sinning. But you ain't going to stop him from letting you run into it head, head first one of these days. He's going to get you. I knew this boy up in Marion years ago and he gave testimony when he got right with the Lord and he's scared to death he stood up and he's just trembling he said brother Danny he said I was on that stuff and I, I don't know what he's doing some guy's smoking something taking on drugs and, and doing heroin and all kind of stuff and he said I went in the house and he said I looked in the mirror and he said I looked in the mirror and there was my face and I had 666 on my forehead he said, Brother Danny, I was wide awake. I didn't dream this. I he said, what do you think about it? I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm fooling around with something bigger than you are is all I can say. The life of sin is a life of regret. The rich man in hell this morning regrets his life. You know what? He was down there and he said, Father Abraham, please send Lazarus, please. Please send him. Down. I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I'd have got saved. I wish I'd have got saved. Can you imagine the people in hell this morning that are screaming, God, if I, if I could just go back, if I can just go back, you can't go back. You can't go back. Once you cross that line, you're done. Once you die, it's over. The point of man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. A sinful life is a life of regret. And it breaks my heart to see so many people. I can see them. I can see them in our church. I've done this long enough now. I can see it all over you, some of you. You're headed down that same road. You think you can play with it, and it won't hurt you. You think you can mess with it a little bit. Well, he, he's a little extreme. I, I can handle you know, You think that. And the first thing you know, you're going to be wrapped up and ain't going to be able to get loose. Like that string, take that one string, tie it around that strong man around, he can break it. Tie it around there two or three times, he can break it. And you wrap it around there enough times, 
There ain't no man can break it. It's too strong. And that's the way sin is. It just keeps, keeps a wrapping. Every day you're in it, it just keeps a wrapping. And one day you can't get loose. A life of sin is a life of regret. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. I'd like for every head to be bowed and every eye closed. Nobody's talking, moving. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's moving. Please. God may be speaking to your heart here this morning. You say, preacher, I don't want to live a life of sin. I don't want to. I need to get saved this morning. Deep down in my heart, I know I'm not saved. And I do need to get saved. Or deep down in my heart, I know I've been saved, but I'm not living like I should live. And I'm going to get it right before something terrible happens. We're going to pray. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask God to touch every single person in here today. Right now. Heavenly Father. I pray right now for whoever this message is for today that they'd make that step they need to make get things right I ask in Jesus name Holy Spirit that you would touch every single life here this morning do what ought to be done I ask you Lord that you'd help somebody to forsake that sinful life that they've been living and come to you Lord and get it right once and for all. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. People still praying all over the church this morning. Thank God for these are in the altar. Maybe there's a teenager. Maybe there's a mom or a dad this morning. Say, preacher, about time for me to give it all to Jesus. I'm going to give it all to Jesus this morning. Come on. Come on right now. Come on. Just get out of your seat and come. This is our invitation. We're not going to sing. We're just going to wait just a few seconds and then we're going to pray. Nobody's looking. People are praying all over them. Just come on, mama. Come on, daddy. Come on, sir. Mom, dad. Teenager, young person, boy, girl. So I'm, I'm tired of it, preacher. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to get it right. I'm ready to get it right. I'm going to make things right this morning. Sin never pays. Sin never pays.